An important application of virtual reality is that we could potentially use it to enhance your knowledge of reality. My name is Dr. Arna Ekstrom. I'm an associate professor of psychology at the University of Arizona. I'm the principal investigator of the Human Spatial Cognition Lab. My name is Dr. Derek Huffman. I'm a postdoctoral fellow working uh, in the Human Spatial Cognition Lab. I'm also affiliated with the University of California, Davis. We try to understand how people navigate space and how people remember where they are. Previous research in the rodent has suggested that body-based cues fundamentally change the way that their brains represent space. Our work here tests that specifically in humans to try to see how much body-based cues influence the representation of space in the human brain. One important difference, however, between rats and humans is that we rely to a much greater extent on our visual system. An important question then regards to what extent does virtual reality mimic our everyday experience? We explored this question by trying to understand how much information we can learn about space when we explore virtual reality. In our experiment, we wanted to test between two competing hypotheses. The first idea is that body-based cues are fundamental to how we represent space. That's what we call the modality-dependent hypothesis. The second hypothesis would suggest that body-based cues don't matter as much once the environments are well-learned. Our study involved a large-scale environment that required exploration and looking around at many different angles. Subjects experienced the environment on an omnidirectional treadmill with a head-mounted display thus providing them with the full range of body-based cues that you might experience in the real world. As can be seen in Figure 1, we had three different conditions. In, in a rich condition, we had participants freely navigate on the omnidirectional treadmill. So here we are in the Spatial Cognition Lab. Um, this is where our treadmill is located. Um, this is an omnidirectional treadmill that will actually allow people to turn and walk in any direction. In a limited condition, participants were able to freely rotate their bodies and heads around, but then they move forward using the joystick. In a third condition, which we call the impoverished condition, participants use a joystick for all movements throughout the environment and were instructed to keep their heads and bodies facing forward throughout this whole part of the session. After participants learned each of three cities under one of those body-based cues conditions, we then image their brains using a technique called functional magnetic resonance imaging. When participants were in the scanner, we had them retrieve information about the relative directions of landmarks that they had experienced when they were navigating. The critical comparison that we wanted to make was to look at the differences or the similarities in the patterns of brain activations and also how brain regions are interacting with each other. So in figure four, you can see what is being activated across the brain and whether there is any statistically meaningful differences in these lack of differences. Null effects are often very difficult to show statistically. Was the lack of any difference statistically meaningful? We applied a new type of analysis in fMRI called a Bayes null analysis where we found there was no difference between the patterns of activation with the different levels of body-based cues. So in another analysis, we looked at how brain regions were interacting with each other. And the idea with this analysis was to again try to understand how similar or how distinct the representations look across these different body-based cues conditions. So as you can see in figure two, we looked at the generalization uh, between different body-based cues conditions. And if we find a high level of generalization between the different conditions, it would suggest that these conditions are represented similarly in the brain. And so that's what we actually found uh, was that through a decoding analysis, we found that we can decode from one condition to another, again suggesting that the representations that participants are forming across these different body-based cues conditions are similar. Overall, what the study suggests is that body-based cues with sufficient exposure don't make any difference for how we remember and how our brain codes spatial locations. If we want people to learn about an environment that they've never been to and know where they're going, perhaps just giving them the visual information via head-mounted display could be sufficient.